in what's probably the oddest title of the year, the Taiwanese Netflix film, Marry My Dead Body, is a rom-com action mystery. But is it good? After finding in an odd envelope, policeman Ming Han's life takes a spooky turn. He's now wed to a ghost husband, and they must solve a crime together. This two hour and nine minute movie starts off kinda rough, and it feels very confused about what it wants to be at the outset. Now we meet a homophobic police officer who's pretty arrogant and conceited. Plus, he's aggressively determined to gain prominence in his job. And there are a few action sequences that I think are fun visually. I mean, a lot of them look like they're shot by an FPV drone, which then puts us right into the midst of car chases and crazy pursuits. But then the movie itself is jittery, like it's being sped up, but not seamlessly. So the effects makes it look very much like it's been either heavily altered or even wholly created on a computer. My brain was having a tough time reconciling what it was seeing because while it was energetic and fun, it was also unnatural in a way. So after this high action chase sequence, our main protagonist, Ming Han, picks up a red envelope on the ground. Now, I was totally unaware of the cultural significance of this. Luckily, though, the movie explained it quickly and easily. A picture, some hair, and some other items are placed in an envelope coming from a deceased person, and whoever picks up the envelope is then engaged to be married to that ghost. So now we have a homophobic macho man being wed to a gay dead man ghost. And while this seems like it is the makings of something just terribly cringy, we actually get to witness character growth and some very touching moments. Now, Ming Han has to work through his discomfort and biases, and some of the ways this comes about are kind of chuckle-worthy. Mao is the ghost, and he's snarky, and the story uses that to create fun and even embarrassing situations for Ming Han. And there's a lot of great discourse that happens between the two also. It's antagonistic and harsh, and then it's sweet and touching. And as we watch Ming Han grow, he moves from being a despicable character to one that we root for, and he becomes somebody who we can easily connect with. Now he's charming, goofy, but still a work in progress, which I think is even better because we don't just watch an overnight transition of attitudes and beliefs. It takes time, and he doesn't get everything right, but through so many of his actions, we get to watch the changes taking effect. He begins to put himself in danger in order to protect others. He then has conversations that are heartwarming and sweet with people that don't really like him, and he takes on responsibilities that aren't his. They just work to create an admirable character, so when the emotional arcs really hit, they have an effect. Now, the dynamic between Mao and Ming Han works also. They progress along a predictable, but still rewarding and engaging arc. We know they're going to go from polar opposites and nothing but conflict to then semi-friends, and then hopefully into a loving friendship. The looks and the interactions, they could be humorous, but they were never really laugh-out-loud funny. And interspersed all throughout this is a mystery. Now, it felt way out of place at the start but it does fit later in the story. Is it convenient? Well, yeah, it is, but it's also still satisfying. And within the mystery, there's a dreadful lack of character development for just about everybody who isn't Mao or Ming Han. I mean, one or two other characters get a little background, but aside from that, everyone else is a stranger. And even though some of them should be given more development given their relation to the story. That's especially a bummer because one of the storylines rests on us understanding the villain, or at least knowing why they're supposedly such a bad person. They were nameless and really impotent within the narrative. So many interactions just felt almost meaningless. There's also a fellow officer that works alongside Ming Han, and I really didn't get his inclusion at all. Now, he's chubbier and gay, and he's named Chubby. And I thought he was going to be an instrumental part in Ming Han's evolution that we would get to see reconciliation between the two, and then a marked difference in the way Ming Han treats Chubby between the start and the finish of the story. But that doesn't happen. And if Chubby is meant to be a comedic relief, it's very unfortunate because not only is he not funny, but most of his treatment and interactions, they're sad and disheartening. There are some halfway decent special effects that are used here, all of them surrounding Mao and him being a ghostly figure. And there are times when he's completely opaque, but more often than not, he's at least semi-transparent with softer glowing edges, and sometimes there are also these particles that are floating around him. And when there's violence or when Mao wants to create a scary visual, the makeup is good, but any blood effects, they are clearly CGI, and not good CGI, unfortunately. So for as much as this wants to be a rom-com action mystery, the only portion that it really excels in is the rom-com, but not in that traditional sense. There is concern and tenderness and growth, which showcases a real affection between the two leads. The mystery, it's only so-so, but used well as the impetus for continuing a parallel story arc. 
While some of the action creates excitement, the narrative doesn't require it to reinforce the heart of the story. Because of the excess sequences that don't adequately add to the story, the pacing it dips at times, making the time noticeable. But when the focus is on the growth journey of Ming Han and then the developing friendship between him and Mao, the movie is captivating and touching, using the character's strengths of charisma and connection to showcase a wonderful relationship. The film as a whole, I think it'd be tighter and more impactful by ditching the extraneous arcs and the fluff, relying then on the dynamic of the leads to carry the story. As it stands, this ended up being an enjoyable watch, and it took a bit to find the footing and not everything landed as I had hoped, but what ultimately saves this is the growth that we're able to witness from Ming Han, earning our respect by developing empathy, maturity, and a sensitivity to those around him. There's not really any sex, some nudity, a bunch of profanity, and a lot of violence. I give Mary my dead body three and a half out of five couches. So have there been any surprising movies that you've seen lately? Maybe something that started off poor and then turned it around to become something great? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.